We are back right now with a Channel 3 exclusive. Channel 3's new law enforcement analyst, Lieutenant J. Paul Vance, brings all kinds of experience and knowledge to our team. Yes, he does. And while many of you know him as the face of the Connecticut State Police, his career spanned 43 years and had him filling many different roles. Channel 3's Renee DeNino is a good friend of Lieutenant Vance and has a story that's never been shared publicly before. I sat down with Lieutenant Vance last week to talk about the tragedy that made him a household name and something we did right after. December 14th, 2012, one of the darkest days in the history of Connecticut. A gunman opened fire at Sandy Hook Elementary School, killing 26 people, 20 of them children. In the hours and days that followed, despite being surrounded by sadness and grief, Lieutenant J. Paul Vance remained the voice of calm. And you never saw uh, any, not just me, you never saw any people that were assigned to, uh, to Sandy Hook or to any other major tragedy uh, break down in public or have a, their moment, if you will. Uh, but not to say it never happened, because the men and women that do that work are human beings. He got through those dark days with the support of his wife. Well, see, I was, I was very lucky because my wife was an ER nurse. She was a trauma nurse. So she... Uh, experienced a lot of the things in her career that I experienced in mine. And his team. A great team, quite frankly. Uh, that, was, that was so important and, and they don't get enough credit. And while they spent long days in Sandy Hook, there was something else on Lieutenant Vance's mind. Christmas was coming and he had an annual tradition in jeopardy of not happening. You see, each holiday season, he and other troopers would deliver toys to the NICU at UConn. I had a grandson that was born a preemie, which is... Uh, Oh my God, he's 10, 12 years old now. Uh, but he was born, he, was, he fit in my hand. I can remember going there and visiting him and staying with him and, and what have you. I held him on Christmas. And, and I looked around the, the NICU and there's all these little babies, all these little babies. And uh, I was with another, another trooper and uh, he didn't want to hold them, he was afraid. But that being said, you know, we said, there have to be other children, brothers and sisters of these babies that it would come up on the holidays and, and, and what do they have. But that year, there was no time to collect toys. I happened to call Lieutenant Vance to check in on him and his troopers. When he mentioned the situation, I knew I needed to help. I had hundreds of leftover toys from a toy drive I had done for Sandy Hook with iHeartRadio. So on December 19th, we loaded them into an unmarked van and we drove to Yukon in Farmington. That day was tremendous. I mean, we had uh, all my nurse friends um, that, you know, waited for us to come because we did it year after year after my grandson was born. So it was something that was falling through the cracks because we couldn't, we couldn't get it done. And uh, he made it happen for us. And, and it was, we took a little time. We, we, we snuck away. It didn't take long. Uh, no press. We don't do it for the press. We don't do it for anything like that. It was to make sure that those families of all those babies are uh, taken care of. It gave him and his troopers a moment of peace in what had been an incredibly difficult few days. We, we, were, we were proud of the fact that we were able to get that done with your help. It, it, made, it made a difference, it made a big difference um, that we, we didn't interrupt that year uh, because of the tragedy that occurred that year. Uh, but um, we, like I said, we high-fived each other and said, all right, let's go. Let's go back to work. Lieutenant Vance says his strength in those dark days came from his team and experience. He, like other first responders, have seen their share of tragedies, including the death of a trooper and good friend of his. He told me that was one of the toughest times for him to be a spokesman for the state police. Meantime, retirement doesn't mean rest for him. In addition to being our law enforcement analyst, he's been spending time with his family, including his wife of 47 years. He coaches boys basketball and he golfs, or as he likes to say, he hits the ball. Renee Danino, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.